Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today. My name is Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. I am coming to you live from Daly Field in Boston, Massachusetts, here to bring you some East Coast Football League semi-pro single-A division football. Today's contest pits the visiting Connecticut Tar Heels against the hosting Golden Badgers. This is the Golden Badgers' first home game uh, since the season opener against the East Boston Pirates. They came away with a dominant 28 to nothing win over the Pirates, who unfortunately uh, were not able to keep their season going. And so in an ironic twist, uh, a few of the Pirates' players have now been absorbed by the Badgers as a result. Um, uh, but since then, it's been a, a long and arduous road trip for the Badgers. Uh, they lost each of their three consecutive road games, uh, have not scored since that game against the Pirates, but they are now back here at Daly Field, and they are ready to get this one going against the visiting Connecticut Tar Heels. You can see some of the Badgers players in their typical uh, black jerseys and gold jersey numbers warming out on the field, and if we look over to our right, we can see some of the Connecticut Tar Heels with what appears to be uh, almost silver uh, jerseys, something between white and silver, and then what appear to be blue jersey numbers. So we're about 10 minutes away from the scheduled kickoff time. It is certainly a warm day out here in Boston. We've been uh, facing those high temperatures all week, uh, but despite that, football is still going to be played today, so get excited for that. Uh, and hopefully uh, some cool breezes uh, coming off the Charles River over to my left should help uh, a little bit just to keep people cool. But it'll be important for both teams to keep their players hydrated throughout this contest. But with that in mind, let's take a look at the rosters for the two teams. Football's got long rosters, so I'm going to try and read through these as quick as I can. Uh, but for those of you uh, tuning in, uh, as I always say, if you go on to enjoy this broadcast, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all my upcoming sports live streams. Uh, and of course, if there's anything you'd like to say to me, uh, feel free to say it in the live chat. For example, as I'm about to read out the, these rosters, if I flub anyone's name, I encourage you to let me know in the live chat. You know, I want to give uh, these fine athletes the best quality coverage that I can. And to me, part of that means saying their names right. <laughs> So without further ado, let's start with the visitors, the Connecticut Tar Heels. Going in order of jersey number for the Tar Heels, first off we have number zero, Tashium Carney. Next up, number one, Denzel Muzone. Number two, Anthony Berardino. Number three, Glenn Jones. Number four, Michael Reyes. Number five, Brandon Garcia. Number six, Terrence McClary. Number seven, Tajay Montgomery. Number nine, Dwayne Martin Jr. Number 10, Chris Ellis. Number 11, Donnie Arroyo. Number 12, Tyron Mays. Number 13, Ray Sledge Jr. Number 14, Kobe Brown. Number 15, Taruan McClellan. Number 17, Kian Baran. Number 18, Andre Edwards. Number 19, Latrell DeVoe. Number 20, Quanell Grimes. Number 21, Steven Sotomayor. Number 22, Justin Bledsoe. Number 23, Julio Ortiz. Number 24, Louis Edney. Number 26, Jeff Williams. Number 27, Niger Devone. Number 28, Keenan Hayes. Number 29, Leek Garnett. Number 30, Ricardo Virouette. Number 32, Ulysses Rivera Jr. Number 40, Fran Rodriguez. Number 42, Ben Rice. Number 44, Ricardo Pacheco. Number 55, Jeff Hunter. Number 56, Shaq Jones. Number 58, Jorge Gonzalez. Number 63, Lakenna Reeves. 
Number 74, Kendrick Walker. Number 75, Jared Norman. Number 77, Tim Vega. Number 78, Carlos Ramiz. Number 80, Devani De Leon. Number 88, Lamar Fisher. Number 89, Terrence Thomas. And, uh, number 91, Brandon Arce. Or Arce. Uh, again, if, if folks want to give me the correct pronunciation, do so in the live chat. But finishing it out, uh, number 92, Travis Wingate. Number 98, Michael Reynoso. And number 99, Leonard Gonell. So that is the roster for the visiting Connecticut Tar Heels. As we can see, some of them coming over to their sideline over here across the way. And some of them over there uh, meeting just off the field by that building. And over to our left, we can see the Golden Badgers warming up. And with that in mind, let's take a look at the Badgers roster. Once again, a lot of players, so I'm just going to read as fast as I can so that we don't miss a minute once things get to kickoff. Going in order of jersey number again for the Golden Badgers, first off we have number zero, Brandon LaJoy. Next up, number one, Jeff Jean. Number two, Keith Barrasso. Number three, Marquise Hughes. Number four, Ralph Duperville. Number five, Jean Janvier. Number six, Braxton Fernandez. Number seven, Miles Oakletree. Number eight, per, uh, Kirk Prescott. Number nine, Hugh Simmons. Number 11, Ermin Gonzalez. Uh, number 17, uh, he's listed as number 12 on the roster, but he's wearing number 17 today, Pat Picariello. Uh, I believe wearing number 14 today is Marquise Allen. Uh, number 15, Brandon Brito. Number 20, Yvonne Merticus. Number 22, Dana Perello. Number 25, Dante Wilson. Number 26, Desmond Rogers. Number 28, Nate Perilla. Number 29, Daniel Garcia. Number 31, Christian Alissier. Number 43, Shane Delaney Cruz. Number 44, Jaden Shepard. Number 47, Cuba Morales. Number 49, Peter Beauville. Number 50, Rene Loriano. Number 51, Jordi Palma. Number 52, Nick Turner. Number 53, Sherlyn Harvey. Number 55, Juan Achar. Number 58, Eric Dukes. Number 59, Brant Toppin. Number 64, Gerald Hullum. Number 70, Roberto Perez. Number uh, 72, Tony Gomera. Number 80, Paul Osayande. Number 81, Johnny Peterson. Number 87, Javon Furtado. Number 88, Michael Meach. Number 92, Gaston Esnal. Number 95, Gabriel Procheco. And number 99, Tommy Tamborella. So there's your roster for the hosting Golden Badgers as we see the officials coming out onto the field. As we should be getting this game underway pretty soon. Once again, thank you for tuning in to this uh, live stream of tonight's East Coast Football League semi-pro football action between the Golden Badgers and the Connecticut Tar Heels. My name is Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. If you enjoy this broadcast, be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all upcoming live streams. And if you've got something to say, I encourage you to say it in the live chat. You know, whether it's 
correcting me on uh, flubbing the pronunciation of someone's name or uh, if you recognize someone uh, in a jersey number and I'm saying the wrong name, you can correct me there. Uh, I'm not proud. I don't mind being corrected. I just prefer to have things uh, correct. Um, and, of course, if you just want to root for your favorite team, if you just want to say go Badgers or go Tar Heels or shout out your favorite player, that's also perfectly acceptable. Um, and uh, then one fun thing I always like to throw out there as a, uh, as a possibility um, is, you know, let me know where you're tuning in from. You know, one of the things that's uh, cool about these online live streams is, uh, you know, there's uh, no uh, local, uh, you know, there's no local restrictions or anything like that. It's not like the local radio stations of old uh, where you would have to get your game coverage in the area. Otherwise, you know, uh, your car wouldn't be able to pull in the radio signal or whatever. We can get this, you can get this anywhere in the world. So if you're tuning in from out of state or even out of country, uh, let me know. I always love hearing uh, about uh, stuff like that. But we do. Uh, but we do have a couple of comments. Uh, first up from Sonny Garcia. Let's go, Brandon Garcia, my son. That's awesome. You know, we love to see family members tuning in. Uh, and Daniel Garcia has... Uh, you know, uh, at the very least, uh, the, in the last game uh, that I was able to cover, the Badgers' first home game, he made a big impression uh, out of the backfield, uh, did great as part of the running game, and also as part of the passing game as he got the Badgers' first touchdown of 2022 um, on what I think was about a 15, 16-yard pass from Pat Picariello on a fourth down. So that was exciting. There was plenty of excitement from that game, and I'm going to be expecting plenty more. And Sonny Garcia is tuning in from Orlando, Florida. So we've already got our first out-of-state commenter on here. Sonny, I'm so happy to be able to uh, present you this game, and I'm so happy you're tuning in. And then from Showtime 7, um, come, to, uh, can, uh, come to Connecticut when the Badgers play the Vipers in, uh, in Southington, or Southington. Um, and... Uh, uh, well, Showtime, uh, you know, if people uh, book me and they uh, pay the fee, then I'm, you know, willing to go just about anywhere. I charge a little more when I have to travel out of state just to accommodate the travel expenses, but, you know, I'm happy to go just about anywhere. Uh, those of you who have followed me for multiple seasons, you know I've uh, done broadcasts down in Connecticut before when other teams have booked me for it. Uh, we've got the opening coin toss coming up. And uh, we got some more from uh, Chap Chapman. Let's uh, let's go. Uh, let's get Brandon, a hundred, Orlando, Florida. So another one tuning in from Orlando, Florida. I love it. So it looks like the Badgers are going to be playing from the left and the Tar Heels from the right after the coin toss. You can see uh, some of the captains out there. Like for the Badgers, they got Dana Perello, Daniel Garcia, Kirk Prescott, and Marquise Hughes. Didn't quite see which uh, Tar Heels players were there. And so we're just about ready to get underway. One slight advance warning to folks tuning in. Uh, like I said, it is very hot today. I'm expecting it to get cooler as the game goes on. And uh, I've got an umbrella out to uh, help protect uh, my equipment from the sun. But again, those of you who have followed multiple seasons, you might remember last year's game here at Daly Field when the Badgers were hosting the Connecticut Brawlers. And my uh, live stream didn't make it to the end because my equipment actually overheated and it crashed the stream. Um, and so, uh, you know, here's hoping that doesn't happen. But if the stream does suddenly cut out, you know, that there, it's possible that that's what happened. So just an advance warning. Um, but I'm going to be hoping that uh, that uh, we you know we get uh, that we get a full stream in here. That's what I'm going to be trying for. So you know, fingers crossed. And here we go. Looks like the Badgers are going to be kicking off here in the first half. Uh, we can see uh, kicker number 11, Erman Gonzalez. So this will be his first game at Daly Field. He was not part of the roster when they played against the Pirates in the season opener. So that's exciting to see. 
the Tar Heels got one player back deep. Uh, he's got his jersey number slightly pulled up, so it might be a bit of a task for me to figure out who that is. But both teams are out on the field. We're just about ready to get this going. Gonzalez signaling his teammates on the right and on the left. Making sure everybody is properly set in their spots. Making sure everything's properly arranged. <laughs> Gonzalez steps back, there's the whistle. Golden Badgers versus Tar Heels. East Coast Football League action. And here we go. It's a short high kick. It's going to be taken out of the air. I believe that's number seven. He's cutting up the middle. He's got a bit of a hole. He's bursting through, trying to shake off the tacklers, dragging them into Badgers territory. A strong return for the Tar Heels to open this one, as that was number seven, Tajay Montgomery. So it'll be first and 10 for the Tar Heels. And it looks like it's going to be at about the Badgers 40 yard line. So a strong return from Montgomery gives the Tar Heels good field position to start this game. And so now out comes the Badgers defense and the Tar Heels offense. Got shotgun, three back formation. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Snap, number five fakes the handoff, rolls out to his right. He's throwing for it all! And just overthrows long and wide out of bounds. From number five, the quarterback, Brandon Garcia. Pass was intended, I believe, for number 17, uh, Keon Barron. So it'll be second and 10 for the Tar Heels. Uh, an aggressive start to their drive. I liked the idea, but it was uh, solid coverage from the Golden Badgers, number 26, Desmond Rogers on the play. And the throw was just slightly off the mark. Come back out, they got one back behind Garcia and one to his left. And I think we've got a false start here. As it looks like Barron was the one who jumped. And so that's going to be five yards going the other way for the Tar Heels. So it becomes second and 15 at the Badgers 45 yard line. Garcia again in shotgun, one back behind him, one to his left, two receivers to the left, one tight end to the right, I believe. Gives the handoff this time. That's number two who shakes off a couple tackles Dancing around and gets a solid gain. That is Anthony Berardino. And it looks like he gained about 10 yards on that run down to the Badgers' 35-yard line. As he makes it third and five. Snap, Garcia drops back, looking to throw. Quick dump, and it's dropped. <laughs> Aimed at Keon Barron again, and that time throw just a little too low. First one too high, next one too low, and now it's fourth down and five. If the Tar Heels aren't able to make this, then that full start penalty is going to be huge. Because without that, it would have been a first down run for Berardino back on second down. Fourth down, five yards to go from the Badgers' 35-yard line. They will be going for it. They put the fullback in motion, and somebody jumped. Oh, it's a false start again. A huge setback for the Tar Heels. As once again, the offense jumps.
and they are bringing on some other players. Are they bringing on the punt unit? They might be trying to pin the Badgers deep in their own territory, play the field position game here early. Or maybe not. No, it looks like they are going to be going for it still, just bringing in some different personnel. And a timeout is called. There was a bit of confusion about what uh, they were supposed to do in that particular formation. And so we'll have a brief, uh, a brief pause here. And uh, we've got uh, more fans of Brandon Garcia, who I mixed up with the Golden Badgers, Daniel Garcia, multiple Garcias. But yes, Brandon Garcia is the quarterback for the Tar Heels. So my earlier comments were uh, just me getting confused and being dumb. But we got more fans of his tuning in, one from Connecticut. German Rojas, I might be flubbing your name, I apologize if I am. And as Sonny pointed out, he is number five, and he is the starting quarterback here for the Tar Heels, who are now facing fourth down and 10 on the back of two false start penalties. Single back, uh, one running back in the backfield now, and they send him in front for more of a blocking position. Shotgun snap to Garcia, drops back, looking, looking, finally throws, hits his man across the field, and he's dragged down instantly. He's going to be short of the marker. A bullet pass to number 20, Quanell Grimes, but a heads-up tackle by the Badgers' defense. On the pass rush, it was Rene Loriano providing the pressure on Garcia. He still made a very nice throw. It's just defender was right there, able to make the stop. And so now out comes the Tar Heel defense and the Badger offense. And the Badgers will be starting on what appears to be their own uh, 31 or 32 yard line. Bit tough to see exactly where the marker is, but that shows you just how close the Tar Heels were because they had to get to the 30. So they were only a yard or two short of the first there. Clutch stop by the Badgers. Pat Picariello under center, two backs behind him, two receivers to the right, one to the left. He sends Kirk Prescott in motion, takes the snap, fakes a couple gives, hands off, spinning off. That's Perello, Dana Perello getting dragged from behind. We'll see where they spot the forward progress, but he is going to lose yards on that play. Swarming defense from the Tar Heels, and I do give some credit to Perello uh, for dancing a little bit out of the way, but still a sizable loss of yards. Looks like a loss of about two or three, so it's going to be second and 12. Picariello comes back out under center. This time, two receivers to the left, one to the right. Once again, two backs in the backfield. Snap taken, given to Prescott. Prescott cuts up the middle, runs right into a wall, and gets stood up. Wait, he's still on his feet. The ball was ripped out of his hands, but they say the play was already blown dead. And that's going to be some major forward progress there as he was being pushed back. First two guys to hit him were number 17, Keon Barron, and I believe number three, Glenn Jones. So a small gain for Prescott on that play. Looks like he undid the two-yard loss, so it's going to be third down and 10. 
at the 31. Or at the 32, rather. Because uh, it looks like the 42 is the yard to gain. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Eye formation behind Picariello. Takes a snap, juggles it a bit, scrambling out of the pocket, looking for an option. His pass is deflected right in his face by the Tar Heels' number 63, Lakenna Reeves. Reeves was bearing right down on him. It looked like Picariello kind of struggled to get his hands on the snap at first, so he was already playing about a fraction of a second behind his defenders. Uh, and credit to him for getting the ball away at least because... That was looking very close to being a sack. He had no idea where to throw it. It almost looked like he just tried to throw it off of Reeves' hand because that prevents any possibility of an intentional grounding call. Tajay Montgomery is going to be back deep to return the punt for the Tar Heels while Airman Gonzalez is coming out to kick it away for the Badgers. The Badgers trying to get in formation. They are running out of time. And Gar uh, Daniel Garcia slides out of bounds to get the playoff properly. The punt flies, takes a sideways bounce, and it's ultimately downed by the Badgers' number one, Jeff Jean, inside the Tar Heels' 40. So not quite the same favorable field position the Tar Heels had on their first possession, but... Still pretty solid as far as the field position battle goes as their defense stands tall against the Badgers. Unfortunately, due to a lack of scoreboard, uh, I don't, I can't tell you how much time is left in the quarter. You know, just got to wait for that whistle and teams to switch sides, and that'll let us know when the second quarter is, uh, has come about. Right now, still first quarter. Each team has had one possession. And Bo, uh, one has turned it over on downs in opposing territory, while the other has gone three and out inside their own territory. Once again, shotgun to, Brand, uh, to Brandon Garcia. Hands off, running up. He's got a lot of blockers in front of him, and he had plenty of headroom to go. Another great run by Anthony Berardino. Credit to the offensive lineman in front of him. It was a number of yards before Burardino was even met with first contact. As he easily gets the first down on that run and gets into Badgers territory, down to the 46. First and 10, snap to Garcia, gives to Burardino again. Shakes out one tackle, jukes and dives ahead. Started to lose his footing due to some solid defensive pressure there. Looked like that was number 31, Christian Elissier who forced him to kind of juke back inside where he lost his footing. That is still going to be a gain of what looks to be about four uh, out to the 42-yard line on the Badgers' side. Snapped Garcia this time looking to pass. Scrambling to his right. Pass rusher chasing. Throws it up, and again, it's over the head of his receiver. That time intended for number 12, Tyron Mays. And it was Rene Loriano providing the pressure on the pass rush after he scrambled out of the pocket. So it'll be third and six from the Badgers' 42-yard line. Looks like they sent Montgomery in motion behind the quarterback. Snapped Garcia, give to Montgomery. Montgomery takes off with speed to the left side, gets around to blocker, hurdles, and gets forced out of bounds. But that is going to be more than enough for the first. It was Gene John Vier who got the tackle there at the end as... Montgomery tried to vault over him, but that is going to be enough for a first down. It 
Looks like they got to about the 33-yard line in Badgers territory. The line to gain was the 36. Send Montgomery in motion. Snap to Garcia. Pitches it to Montgomery, who runs around the end. He's got some blockers. Cuts up the field. Still going. He's being dragged down deep in Badger's territory. Looks like Loriano was the one who will finally drag him down. Some good blocking along the right side for Tajay Montgomery to burst through for a huge gain. It's going to be inside the Badgers' 10-yard line, so we are going to have first and goal. Looks like it, it's about the 9-yard line. So 9 yards to the end zone and 4 downs to make it for the Tar Heels. Here comes their first. Snapped Garcia, gives to Berardino, bursts up the middle, gets hit, bounces off, trying to force his way ahead. And he is going to be just shy of the goal line. That'll bring up second and goal. And it looks like we got an injured Tar Heels player down on the field. I think, I think that's number 90 who uh, unfortunately, is not on uh, the is not on the roster I was given, um, but certainly hope he's okay. When we come back from this injury break, it's going to be second and goal for the Tar Heels. We've got things going in the live chat as well. And it looks like uh, we got someone rooting for the other Garcia on the Badger side from Nefaru Murray, Watch 29, Daniel Garcia, let's go Badgers. Uh, so we've got some Garcia fans on uh, both sides here today as Tar Heels fans uh, rooting for number five, Brandon Garcia, their starting quarterback, while Badgers fans are rooting for number 29, Daniel Garcia. And in the meantime, we're still in the midst of an injury timeout. Looks like they're going to help him up. And it looks like he's going to walk off on his own power. Tar Heels number 90 walking back into the huddle. You know, one thing you've always got to uh, wonder about on a day like this is that with the heat you know, the dehydration, you know, guys are going to cramp up a lot, you know. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a lot of guys go down, you know, have to come off for a couple plays, but then come right back in. But out of the injury break, we're going to have second and goal. Looks like they're at about the Badgers' two-yard line. It looks like a single back formation. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Garcia with Berardino next to him. Sends a man in motion into the backfield alongside them. Snap, give to Berardino, cuts up, d hit immediately, and he was stopped short. Quick cut inside from number 22, Dana Perello, made the tackle with help from number 70, Roberto Perez. And it's going to be third and goal for the Tar Heels. They've still got two more chances to get in the end zone. And not far to go. Snap. Fake the handoff. Quick throw out. And that's going to be easy touchdown for number 20 of the Tar Heels, Quanell Grimes.
you know, and a, a smart play call from the Tar Heels offense, you know, after the Badgers make a big run stuff like they just did on second and goal, they come out prepared for the run. They fake the handoff to, dry, to draw guys towards the middle of the field and then just throw out wide on a simple screen out to Grimes, who went into the end zone easily after that. So that'll make it 6 nothing in favor of the Tar Heels as they get ready. Can't tell if they're going for one or two right here. I think they're going for one. Uh, and indeed, they're going to be lining up for the PAT. Looks like number 13, Ray Sledge Jr. is going to be kicking it. Snap, ball down, kick is blocked! Dana Perello with the blocked PAT. And that keeps it at six. So Dana Perello already showing an ability to break through the line for some potential big plays, because of course he got the run stuff on second and goal, and now he gets the field goal block there. But the Tar Heels do make their drive down the field and score. So on the two-yard pass from Brandon Garcia to Quan L. Grimes, the Tar Heels get on the board first here. And it looks like that's the end of the first quarter as the teams are switching sides. So on the last play of the first quarter, the Tar Heels find the end zone on a two-yard screen pass. And at the end of one, it is Tar Heels 6, Badgers 0. So lining up to kick off is going to be Sledge. While the Badgers send a couple guys deep, looks like Jeff Jean and Jean Janvier are the retur uh, deep return men. And here comes the kick. It's a short bit of a line drive. It bounces right in front of Marquise Hughes. He has to go and pick it back up. Cuts back to the outside. He's got some blockers. Spins out of the grasp of one guy, but runs out of room and finally gets stood up and dragged down and around his own 35-yard line. So the Badgers offense coming back out onto the field for the first possession of the second quarter. It will be first and 10 at the 35 yard line. In their first offensive possession, the Badgers finished with zero net yards. They had a loss of two, a gain of two, and an incomplete pass before punting on fourth down. We got a slight pause going on. I'm not sure what the delay is. But for now, it is going to be first and 10 at the 35. Eye formation once again, two receivers to the right, one to the left.
Picariello takes the snap, hands off to Pirello. Pirello trying to get some blockers in front of him, stumbles a bit, and falls forward for a short gain of about uh, two, I believe. No, it looks like it was actually a gain of one. Pirello was trying to bounce to the outside, but it looks like he kind of hit some traffic with his own blocker. He was trying to sort of direct the blockers to give himself some help and just ended up kind of running out of leg room there. Second and nine now for the Badgers from their own 36. Same formation. Snap to Picariello, gives, fakes the give to the fullback. He rolls out to his right, cuts up field, and gets another short gain. Looks like that's going to get to about the 39, so about three yards on the keeper by Pat Picariello. And that's going to bring up third down and six yards to go. Same formation again. Snap, give to Prescott. Prescott hits the line, hits again, trying to turn his legs, and he is going to just lean forward for a gain of about one, looks like. So it'll be fourth down and five yards to go for the Badgers, and... Are they going to send out Gonzalez to punt, or are they going to keep him on the sideline? Potential risky play here if they end up going for it on their own 40, and it looks like they're not going to as Gonzalez comes out. Looks like they're going to punt. So the Badgers able to go four yards, or five yards, I should say, a one-yard run, a three-yarder, and then another one-yarder. And it looks like we've got a false start. So that penalty undoes all the gains the Badgers got on their previous three plays. And it'll now be a fourth and ten from the 35. Gonzalez getting ready to punt it away. Montgomery back deep. There goes the punt. Slightly curving, and it's juggled. He lost it. Nick Turner trying to dive on it. He couldn't get it. Still fighting for it, and it looks like the Tar Heels managed to fall on it. One of the most exciting plays so far today is that was near disaster for the Tar Heels. Big hustle by number 23, Julio Ortiz. Nick Turner, oh, so close to recovering that fumble. But, I mean, recovering a fumble is uh, a lot easier said than done, especially when it's bouncing as sporadically as that one was. This does end up pushing the Tar Heels further back within their own territory. This is going to be the furthest away from the end zone that they have started so far today. Uh, they started on the opposing 40, the first possession, started on their own 40, the second possession, where they went down the field and scored. And now they're going to be starting from inside their own 20. Looks to be about the 17. Snapped Garcia, fakes the handoff. Quick throw across the middle. He's got Grimes. Grimes running with it, shoves off the defender. Still going. Stiff arms, another. Grimes running down the field. Can anyone bring him down? He is... Forced out of bounds. 
Quanell Grimes, who had the two yard touchdown on the screen pass last possession. He takes that one and he just runs with it. A well-designed play by the Tar Heel offense, a simple play action to a quick throw across the middle. But then what was honestly kind of more impressive was what Grimes was able to do once he had the ball in his hands as he just straight up shoved a couple of defenders away from him as he ran all the way down to the Badgers' 33-yard line. We've got a timeout called now by the Badgers. Here in the second quarter, the Connecticut Tar Heels lead the Golden Badgers six to nothing. It looks like we've got some folks uh, speculating about whether or not this would be a blowout game. Um, and it is only the second quarter and only 6 nothing, as uh, Nefaru Murray said in the live chat. Um, and I will say, you know, like he's saying, plenty of game left. Um, but for the Badgers, uh, they have shown some ability to stop or at least slow the Tar Heels with their defense, with some nice plays here and there. The offense has been struggling to move, and so they're going to need to figure out something different that they can do on offense so that they can move the ball. Well, back out for first and 10. Receiver sent out in motion wide to the right. Garcia back to throw. Looks like he's going to take off. He's running out to his right. Throws one up. And wide and out of bounds. It was aimed at Berardino. Sun setting behind the trees. And we've got the stadium lights coming on here at Daly Field. Give you that that real night uh, night game experience. It'll be second and ten from the Badgers' thirty-three yard line. Garcia's got one back to his left and one back behind him. Two receivers to his left. Takes the snap, Squ uh, quick screen pass, and the receiver is wrapped up pretty quickly and stopped after a short gain. I believe that was number 11, Donnie Arroyo, on the catch. Short gain looks like he got about three yards out to the 30, so it's going to be third down and seven yards to go. Same formation for the Tar Heels. And somebody jumped. And it's a false start on the Tar Heels. So it's now going to be third and 12. Oh, and I think I, I made a mistake on saying uh, where, uh, where the yard markers were. It looks like, yeah, it looks like they were actually down to the 27, uh, not uh, or no, the 28, not the 33, it was the 28. And so now they are at the Badgers 30 because they were at the 25. Now five yards back, they're now at the 30. I'm, I'm catching up. I'll, I get there eventually, always. But it's going to be third and 12 from the Badgers 30-yard line. 
snapped Garcia, fakes the handoff, rolling out to his right. He's being chased, looking for somewhere to go, trying to cut up field, and he gets smacked to the ground. First contact came from Daniel Garcia, and ultimately it was number 14, Marquise Allen, who gave him the big shoulder to take him to the ground. A sizable gain, however, as a fair amount of forward progress with just the direction that Garcia fell. And looks like down to the 23. So this is going to be fourth down and five after a seven yard gain on the keeper by Brandon Garcia. Two receivers on either side. Snapped Garcia, he's gonna roll to his left. Look, throw, got his man. And he's dragged down, but not before gaining the first down. And it looks like the receiver is down hurt. And again, it is hot today, so always a possibility that it's just a cramp. And certainly just for the welfare of these men out on the field, you always hope it's nothing more than just a simple cramp. A uh, bit hard to see what's going on. Some other players kind of blocking the viewpoint. So they got some trainers out there looking at them. So it'll be first down. Looks like it's gonna be first down and a long goal to go for the Tar Heels from about the nine yard line when we come back from this injury break. As they are still looking at the Tar Heels receiver who got that pass. You know, just a very simple rollout to an out route kind of play on that pass, well executed. And it looks like the receiver is back up, still looking a little hobbled, but he is walking off on his own power. That is number seven, Tajay Montgomery. So now out of the injury break, It's going to be first and goal from, looks like it's actually closer to the 10 yard line. So about as long as you can get with it still being goal to go. Back in action, two receivers on either side of Brandon Garcia. Takes the snap, hands off to Berardino. He cuts up the middle for a short gain. Looks like he was tackled by Daniel Garcia, and I believe number 70, Perez. So it's gonna be second and goal. Looks like he gained about three yards there. So second and goal from the seven. Snapped Garcia, looking, throwing. Oh, a bullet, but goes right through everybody. That was, that was a tight window. Garcia getting aggressive on that one. His pass, uh, I believe, was intended for number 14, Kobe Brown. But he had to throw a real dart to try and thread that needle, and as a result, it just uh, zipped past his intended receiver. Third and goal now from about the seven. Snap, fakes the handoff, rolling out, throws, dropped! throw slightly off the mark and Kobe Brown could not come back and get it. Goes off his fingertips and now it is fourth and goal. Can the Tar Heels get back in the end zone or can the Badgers make a, a big red zone stand to take the ball back? Fourth down, goal to go. 
Ball at about the Badgers seven yard line. And quick throw out, we've got a flag on the play. Throw completely missed the target. And it was a penalty on the Tar Heels declined. That's a turnover on downs. A big defensive stand for the Badgers and the Tar Heels come away with no points on that possession. The Badgers are going to have to make something happen on offense though if they wanna get out of their own backyard in this situation. They're gonna be starting on their own seven yard line You know, and this is one of those situations where you realize just how much offense flows into defense, flows into offense. It's the field position battle. So because the offense went so far for the Tar Heels, that means the Badgers now, A, have so much further to go just to get to, uh, to move uh, for a potential score themselves. But also if they don't and they punt it away, it's a high chance that the Tar Heels get the ball back with good field position. I formation, first and 10 for the Badgers. Snap to Picariello, gives to the fullback, and Garcia is going to burst ahead for a short gain. Looks like he got about two, uh, one, maybe two yards. Looks like about a two yard gain out to the nine. Same eye formation. Snap, fakes the give to the fullback, rolls out right into a pass rusher and just has to throw it away. A smart throw away by Picariello finding Marquise Allen just in the vicinity, but that play just kind of blew up from the beginning. I like the idea of uh, faking the fullback dive and rolling out. The problem was someone still came screaming off the edge. And so Picariello really had nowhere to go on his rollout. So it's going to be third and about eight yards to go for the Badgers from their own nine yard line. I formation once again. They send Perello in motion. Hand it off to Perello. Perello cuts up the middle. Not very far to go. And the Badgers are going to be forced to punt. I'm not sure what the whistle was for, if a timeout was maybe called. I mean, we might be heading towards the end of the second quarter here. These teams might start looking to save some time. Airman Gonzalez back out on the field to punt. And it looks like they got Keon Barron back deep for the Tar Heels. Snap back to Gonzalez. Punt is away in the air. Takes a bounce, taken out of the air by Barron and he cuts up field. He's got some room to run if he can get some blockers. Doesn't even need the blockers. He goes down the sideline and in for the touchdown. Yeah. 
Keon Barron took that punt off of the bounce. I didn't see the exact yard line he picked it up, but he does get the punt return touchdown. Because of the short field, it seemed like a, uh, some of the coverage team might have over-pursued a little bit. And as a result, Barron was able to cut across the field as the coverage team was, you know, pursuing on the opposite side. And with his speed, he just got the leverage he needed. I mean, he had some blockers out in front of him, but he almost didn't even need them because he just had the speed to make it. Uh, excuse me. So 12 nothing Tar Heels after the punt return touchdown. And now I believe the Tar Heels are going to go for two. They've got Brandon Garcia back out on the field. Got a three back formation. Takes a snap, handoff, number 12 running to the outside, cutting up field, and he makes it. Successful two point try on the run by Tyron Mays. So that will make it 14 to nothing in favor of the visitors here in the second quarter. So that's got to be a tough blow for the Badgers. You know, the defense makes such a great stand inside the 10-yard line. But then the offense not able to move, and then the special teams gives up the score. So now with the 14-0 lead, Ray Sledge Jr. will line up to kick this one away for the Tar Heels. Uh, back deep for the Badgers are Jeff Jean and Jean John Vier. And then the next level of return men are Dana Perello and Marquise Hughes. Line drive kick. And it's going to be juggled by Perello, but he's going to kick it back up. And now dodges one tackler, runs to the outside, still on his feet, and finally gets forced out of bounds at uh, close to the 35 yard line. Looks like they're going to place it at about the 34 or 35. So the Badgers back on offense. Starting at their own 35. A big momentum swing for the Tar Heels as they took the two score lead. And the Badgers' offense has been struggling to find its rhythm early in this one. They are a run-heavy offense, so if they're not able to win at the line, if they're not able to get the holes necessary, then it can be tough for their offense to, to get moving. You do wonder when they might uh, try for a pass play. They've, they've tried two so far, and both have ended in incomplete passes as the uh, pass rush uh, has uh, gotten in Picariello's face every time. Eye formation as usual, two receivers to the left, one to the right. Takes the snap. Fakes the handoff, rolls out, throws with a man in his face. He's got an open receiver. Dana Perello shakes off the tackle, still running, still on his feet. And he's got a big first down gain on the catch.
And it looks like a timeout was called by the Badgers as they are trying to get something moving here at the end of the first half. Great effort by Picariello to get a throw off with a man in his face. And then Perello uh, was just all by himself waiting for that uh, waiting for that pass like it was a fly ball to the outfield. And then after that, some nice moves to get some extra yards, shaking off some tackles. I think the only fault you could really give him is not going out of bounds. Very good effort. Perello has had a few highlight-worthy plays so far today in multiple facets, really in all phases. He's now got a nice offensive play to go with a nice defensive and nice special teams play earlier. Snap on first and 10, give to Kirk Prescott. Bursts up the middle, he's got a lot of room. Running, almost lost the football, but falls on it, and the Badgers are moving. One big play is sometimes all you need to open things up. As the Badgers trying to make things move, and they have to call another timeout. Again, I, I, there's no uh, clock on the scoreboard or anything, so I can't tell you how much time they got left to try and find the end zone. But a big catch by Dana Perello, followed by a huge burst up the middle by Kirk Prescott. The Badgers starting to find some momentum here offensively. But the question is, can they finish this drive? And can they finish it before the half? And you know, on that running play, that was the kind of hole that the Badgers running backs have been looking for all game. And it shows that, you know, when a guy like Kirk Prescott has got room to get that initial burst across the line of scrimmage, he can be very tough to take down and he can get a big gain. First and 10, once again, they are all the way down to the Tar Heels 26 yard line. And they're going a single, uh, they're going with one running back behind Picariello, two receivers on either side. Snap, drop back, pass rush instantly in his face. He's got a scramble and he throws it. And Marquise, uh, Marquise Hughes just barely got in the vicinity of that throw to prevent it from being grounding. Picariello a little shaken up on that play as he was almost immediately blown up by the Tar Heels number 22, Justin Bledsoe. So it looks like Picariello has shaken off whatever happened to him there. It's going to be second and 10. Picariello coming out now in shotgun. Badgers trying some completely different looks that we haven't seen before in this game. Two receivers either side, Garcia to his left. Snap, takes it, looking, throwing. He's got Perello. Perello falls quickly. It's a short gain. And they've got to get moving. It's third down. And... Was a timeout called? Did they call their third timeout? Again, so hard. I wish I could give you uh, better details on the clock. Badgers huddling up, drawing up a play. It's going to be third and long from what looks to be about the 24, so about third and eight. Shotgun snap to Picariello, drops back, looking, looking, he's got time, fires, got his man, Perello, but he's hit immediately. He's stopped well short by Keon Barron, and now fourth down for the Badgers.
And is that halftime? As everyone is coming off the field, but they're staying near the area where that last play was. The markers have been put down though, so this, uh, I think this might be halftime. Okay, it's not halftime yet. So the Badgers have gotten a couple of quick short passes off to Perello. Okay, so it looks like it is halftime. Okay, so we are at the half. So the Badgers were not able to go down and score on that last possession of the half. And here at the break, the score after two quarters, the Connecticut Tar Heels 14, the Golden Badgers zero. And now at this uh, intermission here, I'd like to take a moment for a local charity spotlight and talk to you about the Brookline Community Foundation. For over 100 years, the Brookline Community Foundation has been a trusted partner supporting Brookline by investing in organizations and initiatives that help uh, create opportunity and promote equity for everyone who lives, learns, works, and plays in Brookline. Among the foundation's many grant programs is the BCF Scholarship Fund for Brookline High School, which provides graduating BHS students with scholarships to help fund post-secondary education. To date, 75 BHS students have received scholarships from this fund to help them as they build their futures. Your support is crucial to supporting Brookline youth as they embark on the next steps in their educational journeys. Visit brooklinecommunity.org or call 617-566 4442 to learn more about the BCF Scholarship Fund for Brookline High School and the various other grant programs that the Brookline Community Foundation supports. Find out how you can make a difference right here in the town of Brookline. And as always, you can find more information about our local charity spotlight, uh, the URL to their website, and the phone number that I just uh, read out. You can see it all down in the description section of this video down below. And remember, once again, uh, if you are enjoying this broadcast, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all my upcoming sports live streams. And uh, uh, you guys have been pretty active in the live chat, so I don't think I need to tell you anything there. You you know what you know what to do. <laughs> um, but for right now. It is halftime. I'm Jesse Mayfield Sheehan here at Daily Field in Boston, Massachusetts. I'll be going off the mic and uh, rehydrating myself a little bit here on this hot New England summer day. But I'll be back for the third quarter. Don't go away.
Hello everyone, back on the mic. I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan, coming to you live from Daly Field in Boston, Massachusetts. Here for today's East Coast Football League matchup between the visiting Connecticut Tar Heels and the hosting Golden Badgers. As we get ready to start the second half, the Tar Heels hold a 14 to nothing advantage over the home team. Those scores coming off a two yard uh, screen pass touchdown from quarterback Brandon Garcia to receiver Quanell Grimes. And then the second score coming off of a punt return touchdown by Keon Barron with a successful two point try by Tyron Mays providing the other two points. The Golden Badgers are set to receive the first kickoff of the second half. Their offense did start to find a rhythm in the final possession of the first half. And so we'll see if they're able to carry that over. Tar Heels coming, uh, coming out to do the opening kick. Should be, once again, number 13, Ray Sledge Jr. doing the honors. While for the Golden Badgers, they're once again gonna have Jeff Jean, number one, and number five, Jean John Vier, back deep with Dana Perello and Marquise Hughes the uh, the slightly shallower return returners, or are they? Because right now it looks like John Vieira is lining up at the same level as Perello, or maybe not. Whatever the formation is, they are ready to receive the kick from Sledge. Fourteen nothing. The Tar Heels lead. And looks like they're trying to get some volunteers to help work the chain gang. Always such a thankless job uh, working the chain gang. And sometimes, you know, at the lower, lower levels like here, they just got to try and uh, grab some helpful fans to volunteer. There's the whistle. Here we go, second half. Getting started, Sledge, a very short kick. Hughes is going to take it. He's going to run towards the middle, trying to look for a hole. Breaks away from one tackler and finally gets tripped up at about midfield. Marquise Hughes with a nice return there. Gets across midfield, or maybe just to midfield. It looks like they're going to place it at exactly midfield at the 50. This might just be the best starting field position that the Badgers have had all night. And now the ultimate question is, they were able to build some offensive momentum with that last drive in the first half. Can they keep that going? It is still a two score game, but prior to that last possession of the half, the Golden Badgers offense was struggling to move the ball. So let's see how they respond here with the change in halves. First and 10 from the 50, I formation. Picariello under center. Snap, 
give to the fullback who gets met right at the line and he's gonna be dragged down for no gain. Daniel Garcia with no room to run there and it's gonna be second down and 10. The Badgers got that one big run off of Kirk Prescott but aside from that, the running game has struggled today. Badgers trying to get all the players necessary for their next play. And they can't get things organized in time and they have to burn a timeout. So not a good start to the half for the Badgers. You know, one thing I will say, I love how active you guys have been in the live chat so far tonight. And also, I just like, honestly, how classy it's been. You know, like, People just very nicely rooting for their own team, you know, even occasionally, uh, you know, ex uh, extending some kind words to the other team. Uh, we see Sonny Garcia, uh, the father of Tar Heels quarterback, Brandon Garcia, saying nice return after that return by the Badgers' Marquise Hughes. And earlier we saw Nefaru Murray, um, who is, you know, obviously a Badgers fan, you know, expressing uh, some relief that an injured Tar Heels player was able to get up and looked okay. So everyone's, you know, every, props to you guys in the live chat. You guys have been, uh, you guys have been good sports, and you've been spirited fans, and you've managed to do both at the same time. So it'll be second and 10 for the Badgers after no gain on that first down run. And it looks like they're gonna go shotgun. One fullback to the left of Picariello, two receivers on either side. They send Pirello in motion from right to left. Snapped Picariello, drops back, looking, looking, throwing, he's got a man! Gene John Vier, daylight, touchdown, Badgers! The Badgers have been looking for that play all night and they got it! The line held, gave Picariello time to find his man, and John Vier got behind the secondary. A 50-yard catch and run for the Badgers' first touchdown since opening day. Now the question is, will the Badgers go for one or two? Looks like they're going for two. They're gonna try and cut this to a six point game. Either way, it's down to one score. So the momentum does carry and actually they're gonna go for the PAT. They've got Airman Gonzalez out to kick. Picariello on the hold. Snap, ball down, kick is blocked. Picked up. And nowhere to go. I mean, a heads up effort by Cuba Morales, number 47, trying to pick it up. But nowhere to go, and the blocked PAT is going to keep it at 14 to six. But the Golden Badgers make a statement in their first possession of the second half. A 50-yard passing touchdown from Pat Picariello to Jean Janvier. <laughs> J. 
German Rojas saying, I thought he had that pick, referring to the Tar Heel safety. And, you know, from from the angle that I'm shooting from, I, I you know, I also thought it was going to be close. Uh, part of me was thinking, oh, man, he was open. If only he'd thrown it like a second earlier, he might have had him wide open. But the timing just ended up working out. And he hit him in stride. I mean, that was, I mean, really, the throw doesn't get much better than that. That was just very well executed. It was a good effort by the Tar Heel safety to try and come over and cover that one. Um but not quite. And then we uh, we got, looks like we got a few kind words for me from Sonny Garcia, Jesse, great job, and Nefaru Murray, yeah, great, great job. Thank you guys, I really appreciate that. Um, and I mean that genuinely, like, I, you know, I love doing this, this is a lot of fun for me. You know, I'm trying to turn this into a, into a career. Uh, so when I hear people, uh, you know, saying I'm doing a good job, that they appreciate what I do, it really does warm my heart, really does get me right there, you know? And uh, always so much better when we've got ourselves a great game. And it looks like we've got ourselves a good one here tonight, folks. It's now an eight-point game. And we now know both teams can get in the end zone. Gonzalez pops one up shallow. It's juggled by Barron and lost on the ground. It's going to be picked up. Oh, and there's some room on the outside. Now cutting up field. Number 31 is going to be forced out of bounds near midfield. Number 31, who unfortunately is not on my roster. And it looks like the Badgers, number one, Jeff Jean. Is down. He's holding his leg. Again, it's a hot day. Good chance it's just cramps and he's okay. And we certainly hope so. Jeff Jean back on his feet, hobbling a little bit. Certainly hope he's okay. In the meantime, the Tar Heels with their first stint on offense here in the second half. You know, they showed an ability to move the ball in the first half, but were only able to get one offensive touchdown. So there's the snap give to Berardino. And he cuts to the outside, showing some fancy feet as he runs for the first down. Anthony Berardino on the run there. Looks like my Wi-Fi is getting a little shaky, so if the video starts buffering, I apologize. I'm not really sure what to do there, but it looks like it settled itself. Okay, so I'm not sure what that was about, but hopefully it wasn't too bad for you guys, and... You know, hopefully that was just an anomaly. First and 10 for the Tar Heels as Berardino ran it all the way out to the Badgers' 40-yard line. Snap to Garcia. He's going to roll to his right. Look, throw, juggled. Oh, almost intercepted. John Vier almost followed up his touchdown catch with an interception but couldn't quite get his hands around it after it was juggled and lost by, I believe, the Tar Heels number zero, Tashium Carney. So it's gonna be second and 10. Snap to Garcia, hands off, dancing around, and couldn't shake off Perez, but a penalty flag is thrown, and now it looks like we got a little bit of almost some extracurriculars there. Trying to see who the penalty is on as that run by Burardino did not go far. Looks like it's on the Tar Heels, and it's an offensive holding call and they're going to accept the penalty and push them back 10 yards back to midfield, and it's going to be second down and 20 yards to go for the Tar Heels. Wait. 
a little confusion with the chain gang. You know, like like I said, you know, you got to be grateful for the folks that volunteer to do this. It's, you know, it's a thankless job, goes so unnoticed, but it's it's vital. Second and twenty. Snap to Garcia. He's going to roll to his left this time. Looking, looking. Unloads. Deep ball. He's got separation. Couldn't catch it. I believe that pass was aimed at Carney once again. And it looks like he just overran the ball just a bit. I think he misjudged where it was kind of come down. As all of a sudden it went, it was coming in over his shoulder. And he wasn't able to turn around, wasn't able to reach up and get it. Credit to John Vieira on the hustle to try and catch up to him as Carney had a step on him. And it looks like John Vieira is coming off after that play. Looks okay, but not, might need a, a couple plays to collect himself, probably rehydrate. It's going to be third and 20 for the Tar Heels from midfield. Snap to Garcia, drops back. He's got time, all the time in the world. He's going to take off to his left, keep running. He's going to tuck it and run. Garcia works his way around. Oh, is that, that was very close to a late hit. And there's the flag. Garcia got off to a big run. It would have been well short of the first, but I think someone, uh, one of the Badgers defenders failed to stop in time and might have hit him after he had already gone out of bounds. And that is going to be the personal foul on the Badgers, and that's going to be an automatic first down for the Tar Heels. That's a tough break for the Badgers' defense that had been doing so well up to this point. But a big run and a costly penalty now gives the Tar Heels a fresh set of downs. So it looks like they're going to spot the ball at about the Badgers 22. I think it might have been like a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. And so a uh, fresh opportunity for the Tar Heels. Instead of fourth and about five, it's going to be first and 10. Snap to Garcia. It was a bad snap. He had to chase it down, juggle it, and he sacked by number 44, Jaden Shepard. Shepard came screaming around the edge, taking perfect advantage of a faulty snap that just wasn't far enough. And so now it's going to be second down and about 13 as they move back to the 25. Shotgun formation again. Garcia looking to throw. Quick throw out to his left. Got his man. Instantly hit. And he's going to be dragged down. It's going to undo the damage of the bad snap and get them a little bit of a ways. As that was caught by number 11, Donnie Arroyo quick hit from number three Marquise Hughes to bring him down. It's going to be third down and will looks to be about five or six. Shotgun, two receivers either side. And we've got early movement.
The officials conferring on who jumped first. And it is going to be false start on the Tar Heels. Tar Heels have had a serious problem with moving themselves backwards just due to some sloppy mistakes. We saw the holding penalty earlier that pushed them back. And then we had the false start uh, right here. And of course, that's after the botched snap resulted in a sack. The Tar Heels have shown a great ability to move the ball, but there have just been a few plays where they've just kind of gotten in their own way. So it's going to be third down and about 10, maybe 11. Snapped Garcia looking to throw. Pass rush coming, weaving his way out, rolling out to his right, floats it up and out of bounds. So it's going to be fourth and long for the Tar Heels. Here as they stand just outside of the red zone. So it's now going to be fourth down and 10 yards to go from the Badgers, 22. And they're trying to swap some players out before the play starts. Two receivers either side. Snap to Garcia, fakes the handoff, back, throws, picked off! Dana Perello with the interception for the Badgers! Dana Perello has been a highlight machine for the Badgers today. And he gets them some slightly better field position. I mean, a lot of times with a fourth down interception, sometimes you're like, oh, if only the guy had batted it to the ground. But he actually got past where the Tar Heels had the yard marker. You know, even if he hadn't, I would have forgiven him on a play like that because that was a bullet pass from Garcia. And you can't fight your instincts to catch the ball on a, on a pass that quick. You know, maybe on a long, deep pass, you could say, okay, how, you know, the guy could have had more presence of mind and knocked it down. But on a pass like that, you just put your hands on it and uh, hope for the best. And Perello got, uh, got pretty good there. He advanced his team about three yards from where they would have been with just a turnover on downs, as the Badgers will be starting at their own 25-yard line. So now we've got something interesting. This is a one-score game. The Badgers' defense has held. Their offense had a really nice play for a touchdown their last time out. But once again, the question, can they keep it going? I formation, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Picariel the snap, hands off. And I think it's Prescott just trying to push back to the line of scrimmage as there was nowhere for him to go. So it's going to be second down and 10 after no gain on that, or actually second and 11 after a loss of one on the run attempt there. The Badgers have had a few big plays that have made up the bulk of their offense so far this game. Can they get things moving once again? Looks like Picariello is coming out in shotgun. One back on either side. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. They send... A man in motion. They're going to give it to the motion man. This is number 27 who's got nowhere to go. At least I think that was 27. It might have been Perello because his number 22 has kind of just been like peeling off and occasionally looking like a 7. And yeah, that was Dana Perello, number 22, who took that out of the motion and 
got the one yard lost back, so it's going to be third and ten as the running game continues to struggle for the Badgers. So third and long. Picariello again in shotgun, one back either side. They send Perello in motion. Snap, Picariello looking for the pass, stepping up, running out of room. He just has to run, and he's going to get dragged down just past the line of scrimmage. Might have had someone to throw to, but when he was stepped up into the pocket, he stepped right into the face of the pass rushers. You know, it looked like he was trying to sort of, you know, take those steps to sort of wind up and really heave the ball for a deep pass, but just ran out of room inside the pocket. So that's going to be fourth down, and the Badgers are going to punt. Probably close to the end of the third quarter here. With the score, Tar Heels 14, Badgers 6. Last time the Badgers punted, it was run back for a touchdown by Keon Barron. Snap back to Gonzalez. Punt is away, almost blocked, but not quite. Favorable bounce for the Badgers, and it's going to be picked off up, and he's going to dodge around one tackler, but he's not going to get very far. Try to pick it up off the bounce and go for a return once again. That was number 31, who isn't on my roster, unfortunately. And that is going to be the whistle for the quarter, I believe. Heading into the last quarter of regulation here at Daly Field in Boston, Massachusetts. The score after three, the Connecticut Tar Heels, 14 the Golden Badgers, six. In the live chat, German Rojas was saying, we need a big stop. Speaking from the Tar Heels perspective and the defense did come through and Sonny Garcia saying that Brandon has to look off the linebacker. Referencing, of course, that fourth down interception made by the Badgers, Dana Perello. First and 10 from the Tar Heels 40 yard line. Snap and, oh, a timeout is called by the Badgers. Not sure quite what happened there, but the Badgers called a timeout. And so that'll be their second of the half. So the Badgers, in a close game, are down to just one timeout remaining early in the fourth quarter. So the Badgers appear to be a little confused about who's supposed to be out on the field. But they've got their 11 out there. And now it's going to be first and 10. They send Berardino in motion back next to Garcia. Takes a snap, gives to Berardino. Berardino trying to bounce to the outside. No room to run, and he is going to be wrapped up. Combined efforts of Gene, Prescott, and Alissier. Gene was there first to wrap up the legs, and then Prescott got the next big hit to make sure he wasn't going anywhere. Short gain, about three yards for Burardino on that first down run. 
And it's going to be second and seven. Second and seven, another give to Berardino, runs up the middle, finds a defender and gets dragged down as the help comes. First contact was made by Roberto Perez with, again, help from Christian Elissier. So the Badgers making some stops, holding them to short runs, but they have got five yards from those two runs from Anthony Berardino, and also the clock will continue to run. So it'll be third down and five from the Tar Heels 45 yard line. Garcia's got two receivers to his left, one back to his left and one back behind him. Takes the snap, rolls out to his left, looking, throwing, misses, flag. If this is on the Tar Heels, this is a big decision to make for the Badgers. Close to, and it is going to be holding on the Tar Heels. And are they going to, they're going to accept the penalty and they're going to push them back 10 yards. And this, this is a decision that I can understand. I don't know what the exact right decision here would be. I'm not, you know, psychic. Uh, but fourth and five from your own 45 is not necessarily outside the realm of going for it. So I can understand the Badgers' desire to try and push them back further. So it's going to be third and 15 from the Tar Heels' 35-yard line. And so... Big play here, the Tar Heels with a second chance to convert, and the Badgers with a chance to get some slightly better field position and a bigger guarantee that the Tar Heels will go for the punt. One back on either side of Garcia, two receivers to his left. Snap, drop back, looking to throw, got time. Biding his time, running up. He's going to take off and run, and he's going to run out of room. About five yards on the gain there by on the run by Brandon Garcia, and that's not going to be enough. The penalty, ex uh, the accepting the penalty has paid off for the Badgers as they gained about five yards defensively as a result of replaying that down 10 yards deeper. Because originally it was 4th and 5 from the 45. Now it's 4th and 10 from the 40. Ray Sledge Jr. out to punt. They've got Gene John Vier back deep. And Dana Perello as the secondary, uh, secondary return man. John Vier and Perello, of course, the two guys responsible for two of the biggest, for some of the biggest plays for the Badgers so far today. Snap. Punt is away. It's going to bounce. And it's going to be downed by the Tar Heels. No return as it's picked up by Kobe Brown. So the Badgers offense back out on the field. They are still down one score here in the fourth quarter. Number 52, Nick Turner looking a little shaken up as he comes off the field. And so he is going to take a slight break on the sidelines. As again, these players have been running up and down in full pads. The Badgers wearing black colors that soak up that sunlight in the earlier stages of the game. And it's been hot all week. And this day has been, has been no different. So credit to both uh, teams and all the players for, you know, for, you know, taking the heat and staying in the kitchen, as it were. 
It'll be first and 10 for the Badgers, starting at their own 30-yard line. They have 70 yards to go for a potential game-tying touchdown, and even if they get that touchdown, they will have to convert the two if they want to tie this game. It's a long ways to go, and they're going to come out in shotgun. Snapped Picariello, drops back, looking to throw. Quick throw on the outside, and it's broken up. Oh, but a flag! Oh, that might be defensive pass interference on the Tar Heels. Number 23, Julio Ortiz, was defending against Gene John Vieira on that one. And that is going to be a pass interference penalty. That's an automatic first down. And unlike pass interference penalties, or, oh, it is going to be a spot foul, but an automatic first. Okay, so they're doing it like they're doing it like the pros. Spot of the foul, an automatic first. Picariello back out in shotgun. Takes the snap. Hands off, Prescott taking off, running. Got a bit of a hole and a huge gain for Kirk Prescott on the run. That's the thing that happens when you start to establish a bit of a passing game is the, the holes start to open up for the run. And that looks like it's about a yard, maybe half a yard shy of the first down. So second and one, or second and maybe a half a yard. Okay, so it is second and one. Uh, the stadium lights dimmed a bit, uh, which is a little concerning. Uh, but it looks like they're going to keep going. Second down and one for the Badgers. Picariello back in shotgun. He moves John Vier over to his right. Snap, drop back, looking to throw. Throws one, juggled, and almost caught on the tip drill by Hughes as it went off the fingertips of Pirello. It's going to be third down and one for the Badgers from their own 40. Third and one. One back on either side of Picariello. They're packing the box, and it's a quarterback keeper, and Picariello's going to pick up the first. Very simple quarterback draw there. And they move the chains with a Badgers first down, and they'll be operating from their own 43-yard line. First and 10, they've got Dana Pirello in at quarterback. He, or no, no, he's, is he part of the eye? No, it is Pirello at quarterback. He takes the snap, drops back, looking, unloads, down the left sideline, just overthrew his man. Dana Pirello was the starting quarterback for the Badgers last year. They've been using him more as a, a running back, wide receiver, as well as a linebacker on defense. But that one, he came in for one play to try and heave it, just barely overthrew Hughes. Tar Heels got to be thinking two things after a play like that. One, breathing a sigh of relief, and two, they know that pain well. They've had a 
bunch of deep throws that have just fallen incomplete throughout this game. So Picariello back to the quarterback position here on second and 10, comes out in shotgun. One back to his right, two receivers on the left, one on the right. Drops back, looking to throw. Fires way over through his man, and that's going to be easily picked off. The Tar Heels running it back down the sideline. Still going, and finally dragged down deep in Badgers territory. That was a huge miscommunication between quarterback and receiver as Picariel completely overthrew his man, and it's intercepted by number four, Michael Reyes. So a huge turnaround for the Tar Heels as they try to hold on to their eight-point advantage here in the fourth quarter. And they are taking over with some great field position to potentially put the dagger in the heart of any potential Badgers comeback. Because it's one thing to be down one score at this stage of the game, but being down multiple scores, you know, again, I, I can't see the clock. I can't tell you how much time is left. But it feels like it's not a lot. So if the Badgers want to hold on to their hope, the defense needs to make a big play. First and 10. Snap to Garcia. Give to Berardino. He's got some room. He's got plenty of room. And he runs all the way ahead for a first. Anthony Berardino got some great blocking in front of him on that play. And he takes full advantage for a first down run. Gets it down to about the Badgers 15, maybe the 14. Snapped Garcia, gives to Berardino again. Dodges away from one tackler, following his blockers, barreling ahead and finally dragged down by multiple defenders. And it looks like we got a Badgers player down. And again, just hoping it's nothing but cramps as they're now making uh, calls for everyone to get water. And uh, from Nafaro Murray in the live chat, jeesh, dagger in heart, Lamau. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe I was a little over dramatic. I don't know. I feel like that's a common enough phrase in sports. And it looks after the brief looks like after the brief pause, Tar Heels and Badgers back out on the field. And I believe this will be first and goal from the Badgers five. Or no, second and goal, excuse me. Oh actually no, it's not end goal, it's uh, second and short from the Badgers five. Looks like they have to get to about the three, so I think it's about second and two. Garcia the snap, gives, running ahead, and that's going to be a touchdown. A five-yard burst into the end zone for the Connecticut Tar Heels. Puts them up by two scores. I don't think that was Berardino on that run. To me, it kind of looked like it might have been Quanell Grimes. but it might have been Berardino as I see him heading off to the bench. Whoever it was, the Tar Heels are going for two. 
snapped Garcia. Gives to Tyron Hayes. And he's going to go in. Flag thrown uh, as Tyron Mays ran that in. But that's going to be a penalty on the Tar Heels, looks like. So they might have to redo this two-point try. As this score has put them up 14, the most they can go up is 16. So it would still be a two-score game no matter what. So they are going to reset the try from further out after the penalty. So they're going to try again from the 10-yard line this time. Snap to Garcia. Drop back. Looking. Floats one up. And he's got Barron in the end zone for the two. 22 to 6. Now the lead for the Tar Heels late here in the fourth quarter. And that one that one uh, is tough. That one might have put things out of reach. Again, I don't know what the time on the clock is, but the Badgers at this point might need a miracle. I mean, if nothing else, you know, I think the Badgers can take some pride in this game. They've played a lot better than they've done the past few games. You know, like I said, they had not scored since the season opener. Their last game against the Connecticut Thundercats was a 44 to nothing loss. And they've stayed in, the, if nothing else, they've stayed in this game for a long point because they lost 44 to nothing uh, to the Thundercats. They lost 40 to nothing to the Windsor Flyers. And they lost 26 to nothing to the Marshfield Hurricanes. So both offensively and defensively, if the score holds here, then this would be the Badgers' best performance since their season opener against the Pirates. And as for the Tar Heels, you know, if, if things hold, you know, the win, uh, the win is the win. They came through with some big plays when they needed them. You know, had a little bit of trouble uh, with uh, some mistakes kind of getting in their own way from time to time, but ultimately... They made the plays when they were needed. A huge interception by Michael Reyes killed off the Badgers' drive and put them in position to get that score and go up 22-6. to six. Ray Sledge Jr. getting ready to kick off to the Badgers. And it's a squib. It's a short one. It's picked up by Alicia, and he gets hit immediately. So heads up hands by Christian Elissier. As he gives the Badgers very good field position. But again, the question is, do they have time? And it stinks that I just I just can't tell you how much time they got. All I can rely on is this general feeling that they don't have a lot. So it's going to be first and 10 from the Badgers' 45-yard line. Badgers offense back out on the field. Two receivers to the left. Three receivers to the left. One uh, fullback to the right of Picariello. 
and one running back behind him. And he moves into a three-back formation. Picariello takes a snap, drops back, looking, looking, running out of time, scrambling, and just getting past the line of scrimmage to avoid the sack as he gets about a yard. Again, Picariello trying to get those passes away. But right as it looks like he's ready to throw it, the pocket starts collapsing on him. So it'll be second and nine for the Badgers from their own 46. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. One back to the right of Picariello. Takes the snap, fakes the give, drops back, floats a pass, hits number 47, Cuba Morales, for a short gain. It's going to be third down and about five yards to go after a four-yard reception for Cuba Morales, who is one of the players that transferred over from the East Boston Pirates after that team uh, kind of folded. Him and Rene Loriano, whose name I've mentioned a few times, they are among the players that sort of migrated over here to the Golden Badgers. Third and five from midfield. Two receivers on either side, one back to the left of Picariello. Snap, drops back, looking, floats a pass, finds his man, Morales again, shakes off a couple tackles, fighting, and I think he's got the first down, he does. So that will be a first down grab for Cuba Morales. as he gets the ball across midfield to the Tar Heels 44. So again, the Badgers moving the ball, but again, is time on their side? Because it doesn't feel like it is. So a fresh set of downs, first and 10. Snap, Picariello looking, throws, hit as he throws. That might be a fumble. No, they say incomplete. Or do they say fumble? They said, wait, there's competing calls. They rule incomplete. That was really close. That was one of those plays that if we were at the NFL or like the D1 level, it would go to, it would go to the replay video every single time. Because that was very, very close. as evidenced by one official calling fumble and one calling incomplete, but ultimately they go with incomplete. So it'll be second and 10 from the Tar Heels 44. As again, you see the struggles the Badgers have had trying to establish a consistent passing game. They've gotten a few big passes and a couple of decent dump off passes. But overall, the pocket hit just keeps collapsing in on Picariello. One back on either side now with two receivers to the left and one to the right. Picariello drops back. Quick pass. He's got John Vieira again. Oh, he dropped it. Oh, he was thinking about the run before the catch. He might not have gotten a touchdown on that play, but he would have had a huge gain and set his team up with very good field position. Instead, it's going to be third and 10.
third down and 10. Again, one back on either side of Picariello, so same formation basically. Snap, drops back, looking, looking, out of time, and he gets ripped to the ground. A big third down sack by number 74, Kendrick Walker. And it's going to be fourth and long for the Badgers as a timeout is called by the Tar Heels. And it looks like the Badgers are going to punt. So Erman Gonzalez lining up to punt here on fourth down for the Badgers. Snap goes back to Gonzalez, punt is away, it's a long one. Barron waiting for it, takes it off the bounce and gets around the gunner. Now he's running towards the middle. He's got some blocks. He's getting blocks. He's heading down the left sideline. Does he have room? He cuts back upfield and finally gets dragged down deep in Badger's territory, close to the 30. So Keon Barron, who of course had the punt return touchdown in the first half, uh, in the second quarter that is, as he took that one off the bounce, he takes another one off the bounce and gets some good distance. Finally dragged down at the 35 yard line on the Badgers side. Or Or where have they actually placed it? No. Uh, looks like it's at the 32 actually. Looks like there was some confusion between the officials. Snapped Garcia, fakes the handoff, takes off running, slides down. And it'll be second down or whatever down in distance it is. Garcia in shotgun, drops back, looking to throw, looking, rolling out, flips a pass, and finds an open Berardino. Berardino cutting towards the middle, trying to avoid tacklers, and finally dragged down deep in the red zone by Nick Turner. A little bit of backyard football there as Garcia was taking off running and then just kind of flipped it. So I'm not sure if a timeout was called or what. Oh, and, it, and there we go, it is over. Always so hard to tell <laughs> when you don't have a clock on the scoreboard, but that is going to be the last play of the ball game. So there is your final. Final score here at Daly Field.
The Connecticut Tar Heels, 22. The Golden Badgers, 6. So the Badgers can't get a win in their first uh, home game back since the opening day, but they do put up, I would say, their best performance since that opening day victory. They get their first touchdown since that season opener. And their defense holds the opponent to the lowest output since that opening victory. So both offensively and defensively, their best game in four games. And this time there will be uh, no road trip the next time around for the Badgers. They're gonna be right back here at Daly Field next Saturday as they will be hosting the Connecticut Rebels. And I'm gonna be here for that one too. So be sure to tune back into this channel next Saturday night at 7.15 p.m. once again as the Golden Badgers will host the Connecticut Rebels at that time back here at Daly Field. To recap the game, the uh, scoring, there was, uh, there was about one touchdown per quarter actually, perfectly balanced in a way. Uh, the Tar Heels got on the board first on a two-yard screen pass from quarterback Brandon Garcia to receiver Quanell Grimes. That gave them a 6-0 lead in the first. In the second quarter, they scored on a punt return touchdown by number 17, Keon Barron, and got a successful two-point try to make it 14-0 going into the half. In the third quarter, the Badgers came out strong with a 50-yard touchdown pass from Pat Picariello to Gene Jonvier to cut the lead to 14-6. To but then in the fourth quarter, the Tar Heels were able to put it away. They scored one last touchdown, a five-yard touchdown run. I didn't quite see who it was, but I'm guessing it was Anthony Berardino. Um, and another successful two-point try gave us our final score of 22-6. So thank you all so much again for tuning in. For the last time, my name is Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. Uh, if you enjoyed this broadcast, be sure to hit that like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel to stay updated on all my upcoming sports live streams, uh, including all the rest of the Golden Badgers home games for this summer, which includes next week's game. And of course, if there's anything you'd like to say and the stream is already over, you can say it uh, down in the comment section down below. Uh, speaking of stuff you can find down below, down in the description section of the video, you can find the information you need about our local charity spotlight, the Brookline Community Foundation. Uh, find out how you can help uh, contribute to one of the uh, many uh, financial grants they give to many different initiatives to you know, try and promote opportunity and equity for everyone living in Brookline. You can find uh, the URL to their website and their phone number down in the description section of the video down below. And if you look at the bottom right corner of your screen, you can see the URL for my own personal website, jessiesports.com. Go on there, you can find out more about me, the services that I provide, and how you can commission those services for your favorite team or player. Or if you just want to skip straight to uh, emailing me, my email address is right below there, jgms88 uh, at gmail.com. And then below that, you can see the URL to my Instagram account where I post highlights from games that I have live streamed. But that is going to do it. From Daly Field in Boston, Massachusetts, your final score, the Connecticut Tar Heels, 22, the Golden Badgers, 6. I am Jesse Mayfield Sheehan. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a good night.